Hey everybody, I'm here with a follow-up video, another follow-up video on Bob the Science Guy and his Mount Rainier shadow proof. And I said I was going to get a photograph of this right here. This is a illustration I did to show what the shadow would look like from a street light way off in the distance to this street sign. But I got to tell you, I'm having a bit of a second thoughts and some trepidation because I didn't know Bob was a perspective expert. So, like, I went to this video, Bob the Science Guy, and says, when Flat Earther P-Brain tries to challenge Bob the Science Guy, the result is an epic takedown. Nothing like someone that doesn't understand the first thing about perspective, trying to lecture an expert in the subject. Well, you know, hey, he's an expert. I don't really want to get involved. I'm just a guy who uh, thinks about perspective a lot and does some Flat Earth videos, but I'm up against an expert. I got to tell you, I'm a little bit nervous. And being a humble, unassuming guy like Bob is, he's probably going to take this uh, down after this video because he doesn't want to brag and show off, you know what I mean? So I expect him to take this off his video after, after I put this video out, just because he's such a humble guy. All right. I promised everybody I would get a photograph of this illustration right here that I did, which Bob calls a silly little cartoon. Um, anyway, but you're never going to believe who I got the photo from. From Bob the Science Guy. Yeah, he took the photo. I don't even have to get the photo, although I did take a photo. I have a photo too, but he took the photo. So I'm going to play some of his video and I'm going to stop and interject along the way. And this is going to give me a good flow for how to do my thing. But I'm going to show you guys the photo that I promised that so many people said, you can't represent that. That's not, that's your fantasy. That's not how it works. This is just your bias showing through. This is your preconceived idea. This is just to back your narrative. Well, really what this is, is a prediction. I predicted how the light would be, and it's really just geometry. Just draw your lines from the light to the sign. It's really pretty elementary. And But you idiots couldn't understand that, and you said, "I need. we need a photograph. You can't show a photograph. A photograph doesn't work. Well, guess what? Bob's photograph is going to prove me right. So my silly cartoon does predict that the shadow could be cast visually upward from a light that's actually higher than the object that's casting the shadow. Yeah. In other words, the sun does not have to actually physically be lower than the top of the mountain to cast a shadow visually upward from the perspective of an observer on the ground. In fact, just like this 35 foot high street light, it can visually cast a shadow upward from a 12 foot high street sign. Yet in both instances, the shadow is actually physically being cast downward from the peak of the mountain onto the clouds below it and actually physically downward from that 12 foot sign. Okay, here's the setup Bob did to take the infamous photo here. That's going to prove my little illustration correct. And it's going to debunk his notion that the sun has to be lower than the mountain to cast that shadow. I have the battery, I have my backstop, and I have my little friend, the flirt. Well, as you can see here, my setup in reality on the counter in my office is exactly the same as p brain setup in his silly little cartoon. Yes, thank you, Bob. And why is it a silly little cartoon, Bob, if you, you're showing the same setup? You're showing a perspective view right here lower than the light and you will see as we go on here but why is it silly bob and does anybody else notice that bob sounds like a robot bob the robot is this robob cartoon the difference being is that my objects are going to behave according to real perspective whereas p brain's cartoon is drawn to reflect his blatant misunderstanding of perspective oh really bob you want to put your money where your mouth is you want to bet that this illustration that I did right here is exactly what you're going to show here with your battery setup? Right about now, a lot of channels would say, I can predict what's going to happen when I turn that light on. Bob, what do you think my silly little cartoon did, Bob? It predicts what's going to happen when you turn the light on. This is priceless. And if I'm right and you're wrong, I'll bet you channels. Bob, so this means if I'm right, you'll take your channel down? But that's really unfair because I actually know what's going on and you're clueless, P-Brain. Really? I'm clueless? You're the one here, and I'm going to show you in a second when we flip the light on. You just proved my silly cartoon correct. 
that I predicted accurately what was going to happen. You had this photo that you set up and made, and you didn't even know that you proved my point. So the irony is, not only did you prove my point here, and I'm going to show you it, I'm using your photo, Bob, that you had. <laughs> this is how clueless you are. Let's go ahead and flip the light on and see if my silly little cartoon predicts accurately what's going to happen. Okay, so let me remind you that his, uh, over here, that coffee mug, that's three times higher than the battery, yet it appears lower. Ready? Let's count it down. Three, two, one, bam, boom, bang, bang. So I just put in the lines there, so you understand, right? Let me put the sign in on the top. There you go, that represents the sign. So the top of the battery is the sign, right? You can see this is what would happen. The light would hit the sign and go up. And if you doubt this, I'm gonna show you, Bob has another picture, which is the clincher, all right? But this is exactly what it would look like. Just do the geometry, just go from the light and draw to your subject, whatever it is that's gonna be casting the shadow, just draw the lines past it and there's your shadow. It's really simple. And remember that light is three times taller than the battery. And Bob, you need to be recognized for the stellar work you're doing in Flat Earth. Thank you so much. Congratulations, Bob. Okay, so let me show you this picture here. Now you can see he's got two batteries lined up. This is perfect. Thank you so much for this. You're going to be my photographer, Bob. I'm telling you right now. For, and for you ballers out there, those batteries are actually the same size. This is not a bigger battery. They're both double A's. So what does this photo prove? Well, by Bob brilliantly putting the second battery there behind the first battery, you can see that the shadow that would be cast off of that front battery, or we call that the sign, right? The top black part is the sign, would be cast slightly down below the sign on the second battery, both being the same size, right? In other words, see the yellow line? It crosses the uh, between the black top of the battery and the silver bottom. It hits right there in the demarcation between the two. It as it goes up, it's lower on the second battery. Okay, so AA batteries are two inches tall. So what I'm showing is that the shadow starts at one and five sixteenths of an inch up and hits the second battery, which for you ball earthers is the same size. It hits at one and four sixteenths of an inch up, meaning that the shadow is actually going down. So it appears to go up, but it's actually going down. And Bob would not disagree with this. You're, you're your boss, Bob, would not disagree. He already proved that in this, in how the shadow goes down. He has this picture right here. The shadow is lower on the wall because the light's higher. Right? Okay. So let me show you my sign thing again here. And it's just like your uh, light and your two batteries that show that the shadow is actually going down, even though it visually appears to be going up. Just the, that's the whole point of what I'm showing you, Bob. Okay, here's my two signs. The sign is 10 feet tall, the light is 35 feet tall, but the light is a mile away and appears to be sitting on the horizon. Okay, so I shot a red laser beam through and you can see it hits the first sign nine feet up, it goes right through the P, and on the second sign, it's lower, it goes through at about eight feet, 10 inches. Now, that shows you that that line is actually going down. That's the middle of the shadow. Now. You, I know you're also thinking that the shadow is spreading out, right? Because it's conical, but shadows don't spread out from a light source that far away. They're actually pretty close to parallel shadow. So that's why I show you the second sign, that spread out shadow that looks like it's spreading out. It's just because it's bigger, closer to you. See, the sign could be two feet tall by three feet wide, and it appears that big at 40 feet from the observer. But closer to 10 feet to the observer, it looks this big, much bigger. That's why I showed you the shadow coming off the face of the first guy, and it looks like it's spreading out. But it's not really, because put the same size head behind him, closer to the camera that's taking the shot, and the head is the same size as the shadow. But it's bigger, and I know you anti-flat earthers have perspectaculia, means you have a problem. You can't understand perspective. Okay, but I'm trying to give you a lesson if you guys could just learn. And Bob, I hate to step on your toes. I know you're the expert in the field. You even said it in your video, you're an expert in perspective, but you must be too busy because you're not really tackling the perspective stuff. And I get it, you're, you're, you're a busy guy. And um, 
So I thought I would step in. The student here, I thought I'd step in and help out, teacher, oh, master, because you are a master of perspective. There's no question about that. <clears throat> so here I am showing that the shadow spreads out, and it covers the same size face, but that face closer to you appears bigger. Just put your hand about four inches out in front of your face and put your other hand out, stretch your arm out. Which hand is bigger? Okay, actually, uh, anti-flat earthers, ball earthers, your hand did not get smaller as it got further away. It's just visually. So don't get scared. Your hand didn't get smaller and your near hand didn't swell up and get bigger. Don't go rushing out to the doctor. It's just an illusion, right? It's just the visuals. So what's the significance? Well, the significance is that you can have a higher light source than the object that's going to cast the shadow. If your perspective is low enough on the ground, kind of like looking at the mountain and the sun and the clouds, can appear to go upward. But we know it can't go upward. As I already showed, see, the shadow has to be cast on something. And it's presumably the clouds, right? Nobody would disagree with that. The complete shadow is the clouds. And it appears to be going upward. But as I showed in the last video, it can't be going upward because the clouds are parallel to the ground. There is no upward of the shadow that's parallel to the ground. It just appears to be going up because of perspective. Just like these street lights, ball earthers, they're not actually getting taller. They're not actually going up. That means we can have this view from a viewer on the ground while simultaneously having the shadow from on top of the mountain, the actual shadow going down onto the top of the clouds because the sun in the flat earth is actually higher at all times than the mountain peaks. That's how it casts down on those clouds. And also, so earlier in the video, I said that I took my own photo of this. And let me show you that. Okay, and here I am. I have a very similar setup to Bob, but unlike the science guy who, who didn't give you any measurements, I'm actually going to give you some measurements. So my light is 148.5 uh, inches away from the battery. It's 162 inches all the way to the screen where I have a piece of uh, wax paper. All right, the light is six inches off the ground. The battery is two and a half inches off the ground. The battery is two inches, but I have it on a half inch piece of wood. Um, it's 13 inches from the battery to the backstop, which is my where I'm catching the shadow. The camera is eight inches back from the backstop. There you go. Actually gave, as opposed to Bob, who said, it's a distance away, Mr. Science Guy. Yeah. So like Bob's picture, you can see that the uh, shadow angles up visually, but we know that it's physically, measurably going downward. And that's how the sun can appear to be casting a shadow upward from the ground from a low perspective. But on top of the mountains, we see that it's clearly casting down on top of the clouds. So I spent all this time trying to do this, uh, setting up this picture. And I thought, man, there's a much easier and a more effective way to show this. Take these street lights. And for you ballers out there, they're not actually getting shorter. They didn't install shorter street lights going away from you. The street lights are all actually the same height. So let's say they're 35 feet off the ground. Okay. They go down and they look like they touch the horizon. Okay. So then I thought, well, what if I take, and let me clean up this picture and I'm going to isolate three lights. The one right here, the one here, and the one here. Those are all 35 feet off the ground, but I'm going to lower this one to 30 feet. And I'm going to lower this one to 25 feet, the one that's closest to us. Now, from an orthographic view or a side view, it's clearly the shadow would be cast. Let's say you cast from the 35 footer to the 30 foot, the 30 will cast a shadow on the 25 footer. So clearly that shadow is going down. But the view from the street like this couldn't be more stark going straight up. I mean, this shadow looks like it's going straight up over your head. Okay. And so what a stark contrast. This is the best example I could show that a light source can be higher than the object that's casting a shadow and it still at the same time simultaneously appear to be going upward visually, just like we have with the mountain here. And for fun, 
uh, I hooked a laser up to my streetlights, and these were all the 35-foot high streetlights, and I shot a laser from the very last streetlight on the horizon, lined it up at the next streetlight, and that lines up with the next one and so on, and I shot that. I want to show you what that would look like because somebody brought up in the comments about the only definitive way is to use a laser. Well, the laser is still going to look like it's going up. All right, watch this. It goes up and over. See how perspective works? That laser is not actually curving. Ball earthers, that laser is not actually bending. Okay, and here's a fun one. What would it look like if you were at the base of the mountain looking out away from the sun and looking toward the shadow? It would look something like this. Again, it's that squat pyramid from the ground at the base of the mountain. Okay, now I heard said that the clouds are not always low around Mount Rainier. In other words, Mount Rainier is not always sticking up through the clouds, right? Sometimes the clouds are higher. Okay, let's say that's true. Fine. But then they go on to say, and they show a shadow like this, and they say, well, the only way this can be produced is that the sun is lower than the clouds. And that's wrong, because here I am, I'm about 15 feet from the light source. My light is above my bathroom vanity, and it's about seven feet up. I'm sitting on the ground, so my eyes and camera are about three feet off the ground. I raised the cloud and mountain up about four feet off the ground, and sure enough, I get that same shadow. That's a light source higher than my cloud and my mountain, just as we expect to see. Okay, I think I've gone on long enough. I could just keep going. This is my favorite subject, uh, perspective. And uh, anyway, uh, if you haven't bought a t-shirt, go check them out. I got uh, long sleeve hoodies, and I really appreciate everyone who's purchased. Thank you so much, and we'll catch you again soon. I will be putting out more videos. Bye-bye.